look around this room and I see nothing but untapped potential. You have potential. You have... Oh boy. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 266, it's May 14, 2021, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And so much we cannot talk about right here on the first, the only, and the fully vaccinated wrestling podcast. That's correct. We Completely independently of each other, we both got our second shots today. Yeah, how about that? That was... <laughs> Different places, different areas of the of the state, and just so happened they both of our appointments fell on this day. Yeah, so you know, two weeks from now, we can uh, we can travel all over the country again. It's great. That's right. I'm gonna just just line up. Just gonna spit in so many people's mouths. What? I mean, yes. All right. Uh, l- lots to talk about. Uh, WWE backlash coming up this weekend. Sorry, WrestleMania backlash. <laughs> It's definitely a, like an SEO thing, right? Seems like it, right? Like there's some weird. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason it's beca- it was backlash for, you know, 15 to the last 22 years or however many years mm-hmm. of the, they actually had a backlash. And then they changed it this year to uh, to WrestleMania backlash. But yes. Um, how pumped are you for this show? Um. I'm feeling a little bit deflated. What? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think anything. I mean, there's been bad stuff on the show, but I don't think the build <laughs> to like the top matches has been bad by any means. Um, but not a lot that I'm like super jazzed about either. Partially because we're seeing similar or the exact same matchups to stuff we've seen either just last month at WrestleMania. Or in some cases, matches we saw earlier this year. Um, but there is, I guess, one or two sort of fresher matchups on the show to uh, to maybe get excited about. Oh, we can talk about those here. Damian Priest is battling the Miz in a human cage match. I mean, a lumberjack match. Uh, <laughs> WCW had one once and referred to it as a human cage match, which was humorous. Uh, Damian Priest and the Miz, now with less Bad Bonnie. <laughs> yeah I, I i feel like this will be interesting because we'll find out if they've given up on damien priest already or not <laughs> yeah like he has to win unless like as you said they've just completely given up on him yeah i mean they are they did let miz pin him in his underwear a couple of weeks ago but yeah um yeah, so that. that that's not something generally that happens to guys that they think are like tippy top main event guys but uh you know fingers crossed he's a he's a newer face despite his you know actual age being a little bit old he is young in television time right and uh i hope he wins in about five minutes or less miz was in miz's underwear miz was not in priest's underwear (laughs) it's an important distinction and i appreciate you making it thank you the Dirty Dogs are wrestling Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio for the tag team championship. They've been pushing really hard that there's never been a father son tag team uh, championship duo in WWE before. So, I mean, pretty clear that's where they're going with this, right? Probably should have had that at WrestleMania. Like, it sounds <laughs> in of, cool and fun in front of people. Yeah, I probably would have done that on television on a, on a WrestleMania show in front of people and made a big deal out of it um but hey i guess doing it here will will also be fine um my personal distaste for uh for dolph ziggler uh broad denegian as it may be is uh is uh they're a fine team him and root are like a really solid like i they wouldn't be my champions but be like yeah you could put that i would slot them where like AEW has the varsity blonde slotted like they're fine they're fine (laughs) 
they would have fit really well in 1989 WWF. Mm-hmm. 100%. But they would have just been a team. Like, like, oh, the, yeah. like the Brain Busters got the tag titles, but the Brain Busters also, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Rude, Rude and Ziggler are not as good workers as the Brain Busters, but they have <laughs> 53 times the charisma. I think that's fair. Um, yeah, I think that's, they're a solid team. They would have worked like the Bushwhackers or <laughs> one of those other, probably would have worked the Rockers. Um, like they would oh, have yeah. worked all, all of the non-championship babyface teams. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. Those are the two. Mm, well, I think there's one more here. I, I think the worst build for a match on this show, uh, with the exception maybe of, of the Raw Women's title match on the Go Home Raw, the worst build to a match on the show is the SmackDown women's title match between Bianca Belair and Bailey, where they've just had Bailey uh, laugh a lot. And like the idea is that she's laughing to cover up for her insecurities and she knows that she's not as good as Bianca and she's going to lose to Bianca and blah, 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 blah. But every one of these segments just has Bailey doing a bad fake laugh. And, uh, I don't think it's any good. Yeah. So um, she's become the Joker, you see. (laughs) (laughs) Like Joaquin Phoenix said in his Oscar winning performance as the Joker, I am becoming the Joker, she she said. Um, And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not great. Like, and I know it's hard because, and this isn't, this isn't, like it's it's their own fault that Uh-oh. they didn't have any challengers ready for <laughs> for Bianca. But it's like, okay, it's like, well, Bianca's already beaten Bailey like three times. So like how do we make this a feud? Well, have Bailey beat her up and laugh, I guess. I guess that's what <laughs> they came up with. Like, I don't know. If only they had like a bunch of women under contract in Orlando that they weren't doing anything with. And like a heel that was ready made, like Tony Storm, for example. Sure, sure. Tony Storm, uh, Mercedes Martinez, uh, you know, Aunt Aunt Candace. Aunt Candace, yeah. Yes. Lots and lots of women who can work heel are currently heels on the show that they are on <laughs> and uh, don't need to be there any longer, but still are for some reason. And yep, we're watching that and we're doing, and Natty and Tamina are the. <laughs> are the SmackDown tag team. Now we get one women's tag team for show and they're the SmackDown tag team. Honestly, if you're like, God bless Natty. I like Natty. God bless to me. And I don't have anything against her personally. If they have to be on the show, that's probably the best spot for them. I mean, especially for Tamina. Cause like all she has to do is like a Samoan drop and a super kick. Right. Oh yeah. Not seeing her in long singles matches is, Yes, yeah. for everyone involved. Agreed. Plus, it you know I do I do anything that gets more Reginald on the show is important as we as we know he's the star of the women's division. The as you like to call it the main protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's probably more like antagonist, but I think it's funnier when you see a protagonist yes. of, of WWE is Reginald. That's right, the main character, if you will. Yes. Yes. All right, so then the Raw Women's Championship match, Rhea Ripley defending against Asuka and Charlotte Flair. You know, the build actually to this has been pretty bad all the way through, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, Rhea just beats Asuka clean. Charlotte got suspended and then immediately put back on TV the next week. And then this week, they all played second or third fiddle to Alexa Bliss and her doll. A lot, of, a lot of people doing a big angle and then missing zero shows going on in wrestling <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah. We'll have one to talk about in AEW a little bit later. But yeah, no, that it's, it's been a very, very bizarre build. It's also just like on the surface level, your men's world title, you're doing the M- WrestleMania rematch with an extra person thrown in. Right. So maybe you don't have to immediately do that same thing with the women's title on the same show yeah so just just at, like at the base dna of this it's kind of boring and overdone and then when you add in the sonia deville 
has some sort of authority and reinstated Charlotte, even though she's a SmackDown authority figure. And yes, and then we we topped it all off by uh, by the main event uh, or the the go home angle being uh, centered around Alexa Bliss. So, well, and Alexa Alexa now has magical powers. I mean, perhaps she has for a few weeks now, uh, but she. Um, she did some magic on Raw this this week. Um, and the first match on Raw, I believe, was women's tag and involved the participants in the in the Raw women's title match and some of the uh, the tag team champs as well. And uh, Shayna Baszler had to sell a phantom magic attack on her legs. That's right. Uh, she she just. She fell and then her other leg buckled, which also made me laugh. Like it was happening to like her left leg and then she wants to stand up and then her right leg buckles. So I don't know if it was supposed to be in both legs. Uh, I'd, I'd like more, uh, more info on that, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was bad. It was very bad. Um, and on top of that, of all the people to have involved in your magic storyline, you picked for lack of a better term, the realest one in that division. And like, it's just, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get what we're doing anymore. Other than the obvious fetish of seeing Alexa Bliss dress like a little girl. I don't know what anyone on the audience side or on the creative side is getting out of this. You know what, which audience dropped the most throughout the three hours of raw this week what's that 50 plus 50 plus men in fact so alexa who was on in the first segment the uh the old men they tuned in they saw what they needed to see then they tuned out Ugh. look if there were any other explanation for it i would jump to offer the explanation (laughs) but they advertised the rematch of the wwe championship match from wrestlemania as taking place all night long (laughs) (laughs) they closed the show with the main event for a change they advertised it i would say and they even announced it the week before so it wasn't one of these ones that gets announced like the thursday before on twitter or whatever right or it's 7 seven fifteen the night of the show which right. happens quite often yeah no 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 it has it has to be the reason it's just yeah it's it's awful everyone yeah. everyone should be ashamed of themselves <laughs> so um, so i saw an, i got a, i'm on the uh wwe email list of course um mm-hmm. and i got a, an email from wwe shop today and i've brought up on the show before that i don't like how they focus so much of their merchandising on the quote-unquote legends and Mm -hmm. they need to do a lot of merch for for new characters and and blah 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 blah. however the advertisement today included a a photo of uh, a new uh lily shirt for alexa bliss with a picture of uh, the doll on it and Uh i feel i feel like anyone that buys that should go on a uh, a registry somewhere Agreed. Yeah, they shouldn't be allowed to own property or vote. I think that's fair. I think that's that's a fair punishment for that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we talked about the bill, I suppose, for Rhea, Rhea Ripley versus Asuka versus Charlotte Flair. Feels like Asuka's getting short shrift here. Like Asuka did like no jobs for mm-hmm. f- four years, and now she just does jobs all the time. And it's like, eh, it's not the worst thing. Like it's it's gonna make Rhea, so that's fine. But also, you know, maybe Asuka could do a couple less jobs. Yeah, maybe it would mean more for Rhea to beat her if she wasn't getting pinned left and right. But, you know, <laughs> it's yeah, there are worse spots to have in that company. Uh, and if Rhea is a heel and Charlotte is a heel, there are no obvious choices for a top baby face until Becky comes back, I guess. So... <laughs> <laughs> or they do a draft or something. So, right. I mean, she'll be fine. Like she'll still be on the shows and still probably be in an, you know, she'll be on TV a lot. She'll just 
now she'll probably have to end up in like a feud with Alexa Bliss or something. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. We mentioned the Raw uh, title match for WrestleMania Backlash this weekend. Uh, Bobby Lashley defending against Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman in a three way. Braun Strowman thankfully has shaved his head again. I don't know who told him to grow his hair out and why they hate him, <laughs> but thankfully he shaved his head again this week. Uh, I don't know, man. There's not a whole lot of life in this program. Like it's all been very no. pain, all been very paint by numbers. Like the, they didn't do a finish to Bobby and Drew on Raw on Monday, and it's like, yeah, they, you know, it's not, that's okay. Like WWE does that stuff. You're not going to get a finish. You're going to get the guy, the third guy in the three way coming in and they're all going to brawl on the on the go home show that's like paint by numbers stuff that's fine i didn't have i I haven't had a problem specifically with any individual thing in the build for this but i'm also not excited for it yeah no i again i don't don't think anything has been necessarily bad but i 100 percent agree and it just it feels like we have perpetually been in like the second week of this feud. <laughs> yeah. Like we're not we have no sense of urgency. We're not doing anything like particularly interesting with it. We're other than just saying it's going to be a three way. And it's like, oh, they do the thing where like the heel tries to partner up with one of the guys. And and then, you know, at the end of the show, that guy acts like he's joining with the heel, but then beats up the heel, too. And it's like, OK, yeah, this is. This is a solid week two of four ending to a show, I guess, but not, I wouldn't necessarily say that it felt like there was a lot of fire behind that uh, when, when it's your, your last show before the pay-per-view. Sure. And then uh, the last match announced so far, the SmackDown uh, universal title match, the WWE universal title match, Roman Reigns defending against Cesaro. I doubt Cesaro is winning, but Here's what we know. We know he recently signed a new contract with WWE. Mm -hmm. We know that Vince McMahon cares very much about how much he pays guys, which is why Edge um, was in the main event of WrestleMania. Like, not that Edge doesn't deserve it necessarily, but just that's why he was in that spot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sars getting paid a lot now. Does Vince pull the trigger or... Um, I don't know what. How, how do you see this? Where do you see it going? I don't see Cesaro being the guy to beat the to beat Roman Reigns. I just don't. <laughs> like, I'm not saying maybe money in the bank later in the year and he gets it that way or something. I'm not saying I don't think he's ever going to win it because at this point, you know, Dolph Ziggler won it. The Miz was champion this year. Like, right. there are no there are no rules anymore. Like, um, but. I don't see him being the one to like dethrone Roman. I think they are saving that for someone who doesn't work there full time. <laughs> think about that, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, because you could have Cesaro win and then build Roman back up for six months and do your match with the part-timer and still have it be a big deal. But no, we're just, no Brock or Cena or, you know, I fingers. I know their fingers crossed, and for Dwayne, still coming back one day. But like, there, I, I just get the feeling that there's no chance. Like, if they didn't have really? Brian win it at at Mania, I just don't see Cesaro being the guy to take it off of Roman. Yeah, it sure felt like you know not not giving it to Edge. Oh, I guess we didn't know how quickly Brian's contract was going to be up, but. <laughs> True. Not, uh, not giving it to someone else at WrestleMania. Yeah, sure felt like they were saving Roman for, for someone bigger than Cesaro. But yeah, we'll find out. I mean, yeah, I mean, we talked about it at Mania. Like, they do not hand out pinfall uh, victories over Seth Rollins historically. Like, they don't just hand them out to anybody. Yeah. So there's, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I could see him be Cesaro being the money in the bank guy later, but I think he's losing this one here. That's, that's, that's logical. All right. Uh, that's uh, WWE stuff. Uh, New Japan, very quickly here. Oh, no, that's actually, it's not all of WWE stuff because uh, Fightful reported this week Zelina Vega is going back to WWE. So I guess all that sweet, sweet simp money from her twitch homies dried up 
I guess so. Um, you know, it's maybe maybe she was really uh, maybe she was really in the Yang gang, and she thought Andrew Yang was going to really lead the charge on uh, on unionization, or you know, SAG like sort of offered like vague you know vague uh, support to that to that movement for a second, and then yes, nobody did anything, and Andrew right. Yang's trying to run for mayor and trying to avoid say, saying something stupid for you know more than 12 hours at a time right so he's he's busy sag uh, like if sag was interested in this fight they could they probably would have picked it years ago right uh that seems to make sense i don't feel like there was a, enough money in it for them potentially before say i don't know 2006 or 8 or so that's fair. So like, I'm just saying, yeah, maybe, she, so maybe she was expecting like a big groundswell of support behind her. And a lot of other people were going to, who had the, the Twitch and, and, and YouTube and, and whatever else we're going to, we're going to quit with her and nobody else did. And so she said, Oh, well, I guess I'll go back to work. I don't know. I don't know. You know, and unless, unless she publicly comments on it, we're <laughs> not going to know why, what exactly her reasoning is. Her husband has not been on television since she was released. <laughs> and then vignettes started popping up for his return uh, or started being filmed at least. Uh, did they air one? They aired one, didn't they? They aired two, I think. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they've, like, they're airing vignettes for his return. So he ain't going anywhere. That could be part of it too. I don't know. So, and we won't, yeah, we won't know for sure. But yes, it felt like there was a hot second there where like, people were paying attention to this and right. noticing, you know, what anyone that actually follows wrestling has known for years, which is how, you know, ass backwards, uh, you know, it, calling, <laughs> calling these people independent contractors is, but there's, you know, that, that sort of thing really needs kind of constant attention, especially when you're dealing with a giant com- company like WWE and this, uh, that event did not keep the pressure up. So here we are. We talked about this briefly uh, off offline. Doesn't this all boil down to right before she was like 15 minutes before she was officially released, she tweeted, I support unionization. Doesn't this all boil down to the ideals of socialism to some degree of unionization of whatever isn't it the don't these ideas work or sound very good generally but when it specifically applies to you (laughs) and your circumstances and for whatever reason whether it's just because you have to make money and because you have to fit into the economic system that's going on around you despite what your ideals or your convictions might be It feels like when push comes to shove and it's like we need someone to make an example. We need someone to stand up to the man and make a fist and have some principles. Everyone just goes for the money. Yeah, and it's very tempting, you know, financial security and things like that are are very tempting. And I don't I don't want this to come across as me bashing her personally, because a lot of people in that same scenario, maybe wouldn't have even quit at all, you know? Yeah. Or wouldn't have raised the fuss at all, much less actually, you know, taken it as far as to lose. I, again, I don't know if it was ever officially said, was she fired? Did she quit? Whatever happened. But point being, yeah, I think that's part of it. I think if you look over the last year in our political climate, um, constant pressure does work. Um, you know, in, in Minneapolis, their city council after days and weeks of people taking to the streets repeatedly, uh, a, you know, pledged to abolish the police in that, in that town, in that precinct. They also burned down a, you know, a police station during, during that time. Not, not all of them, but that happened during those, those very, very intense times. And they got a, a commitment to do that. Now we're a year later and there was an article, I don't remember if it was in Vice or somewhere, 
about how that process then stalled out as people stopped being in the streets every night. Right. Um, and yes, so this anything. So I think what we have seen over the past year is that the direct action will get attention and will create the pressure and will begin to maybe push for that change that people want to see. But unless it is constant, unless you people are willing to be at this for days and weeks and months and years, it is likely not going to happen, at least not very quickly. Right. Would you tell the loud British man in the background that uh, Liverpool sucks and Manchester City rules? <laughs> Will do. All right. Not, not necessarily right this minute, but just at some point. Uh, yeah, uh, now we can talk about New Japan very quickly. They canceled a bunch of shows. They postponed some because there is a state of emergency in Japan right now because COVID numbers are spiking there and because less than 1% of the, of the population there is vaccinated right now. Both They both can't get vaccine or have had a problem getting vaccine. And I read one commentator write that it's just not a part of Japanese culture to get vaccinated. And I haven't done any further reading on that to determine if that's true or not. It didn't come from the most reliable source. So take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> but New Japan's canceled a bunch of shows and put or postponed some and uh, just bad times over there. And they get the Olympics coming up in July. And I don't know that we're going to have Olympics this year. Yeah, I think what we found out most most of all is that uh, God does not want the Olympics to take place anymore and that we should cancel them. Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't know. I saw I like I like the uh I like the soccer and the summer Olympics. I I generally enjoy watching the Olympics in in small doses, <laughs> but uh you know, they're not my, it's not my, it's not something that I, I live and breathe for, but yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll suck for people not getting that chance to, you know, get out there, get their faces out there and, and maybe get endorsement deals, stuff that comes out of performing well in the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, it's definitely important to, uh, to a bunch of amateur athletes. So uh, yeah, hopefully that all gets under control. AEW, they have a pay-per-view coming up in about two weeks now. And apparently they just realized it this week because <laughs> they announced like 46 matches for it on this week's dynamite. They ran through about four months worth of angles on a single show, which is kind of how most live dynamites go. I hated that show uh, with the exception of John Moxley and, and Yuji Nagata and Darby on against Miro, the main event. I thought those were really good matches. The in-ring is the, the least of the, my problems with that show ever. Like I generally, <laughs> I think that I think they should build a company around their in-ring and yet they insist on doing like 63 angles per show. And I think that's the thing they're worst at. And so I was not a fan of this week's AEW. What did you think of it? Yeah. I heard it described as the worst show you've ever seen that had three, four star matches on it. <laughs> um, and I, I'm not a star rating guy i don't do personal star ratings so th that's subjective obviously but yeah i thought the opener was great with nagata and moxley treated nagata like a big deal and a legend which he is and then nagata's great because he's smart and he knows not to do anything he can't do yep uh, and moxley like moxley was not dismotivated like the entire time he was their world champion as he was to get in there with with Yuji nagata oh like it was a it was adorable how excited and amped up he was. Like, <laughs> plus they did the uh, the Onita tribute with him coming out to Wild Thing and stuff. So it's like, yeah, he was so clearly having like the time of his life. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, the post match, notwithstanding, I thought the SCU and Young Bucks match was really, really good. Um, I was invested in it. I can't. I mean, I can and can't believe. They did like uh, apparently this started in like December uh, that on like an episode of AEW Dark, Frankie Kazarian and Chris for Daniels was great. If they ever if they lost a match before winning the tag belts, they would have to disband. And 
we then didn't hear anything about SCU for about six months and then, uh, or five months, I guess. And then two weeks ago, they became the number one contenders <laughs> and then they lost and they have to break up. And they got about four seconds to let that sink in before they had to cut to a, uh, an inner circle promo backstage <laughs> promo. Um, and then, and then something else. And then they did a, like during the commercial shot of them hugging and then very quickly cut to something else. So that's like, I don't know how you do like, like Daniels and Kazarian have been teaming since like, I mean, they maybe have teamed even before that, but like they, they were a team in TNA from like, like 2011 or 2012 maybe. And then they were a team all through those years in ROH uh, up through like when Daniels won the world title and stuff. And then they were, you know, some of the first people signed to, to AEW and like, this should be a giant friggin' deal probably should have been on the pay-per-view at the very least. And instead it was a dynamite match and n- God knows when we'll see either of those guys again. <laughs> yeah, Daniel tweeted after the match that might be it. Um, and I would assume anytime you're north of fifty, <laughs> you know, pretty much every time you get you get in the ring, that could be it. Uh, and he's mm-hmm. he's the office there. He's the head of talent relations there. Because Arian, I'd be worried if I were him. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, that definitely way too much good brothers and friggin' Brandon Cutler wandering around the ring during that match for me. Yeah. Luke Gallows jumping on the thing wearing uh Cherry Martell's earrings and a fedora. No thanks. And a tie-dye shirt that says Good Brother Summer. That you know. Which Brian Myers told a story on his podcast that uh Gallows wanted to wear that out for the main event of the last Impact pay-per-view in the double title match, and Don Callis yelled at him and told him he couldn't wear it because this was supposed to be serious. <laughs> and so Gallows had a boo-boo face the rest of the uh, the night, which I thought was very funny. Yeah. Um, so that one of the ma- matches announced for their Double or Nothing pay-per-view, which is coming up on Sunday the 30th, Stadium Stampede 2. Actually, they didn't officially announce this ever. Uh, the Pinnacle challenged the inner circle to Stadium Stampede. Uh, but if if uh, if it takes place or if the Pinnacle wins, then inner circle has to disband is the stipulation. I'm sure it's happening, but they never officially announced it. I don't know, man. Do we need cinematic matches anymore? <laughs> I mean, I I don't. I don't need them at all. Um, but yeah, my, my thought was one, I did have the thought, did they rush to get this SCU thing over with because they were going to do another, if this team loses, they have to, they have to <laughs> retire or disband I don't, gimmick on the pay-per-view and they didn't want to do two of those on the same show. I don't have an answer for you, man. I don't know. Again, that's not, that's not a good reason because they, it's fake. You can book, you know, you didn't have to book that stipulation for either of those teams. Yeah. Um, Or, or, or have them both come to a head at, at the same exact time. Um, Also blood and guts isn't a blow off. No, uh, it was the first match for some reason. (laughs) Uh, Yes. War games was the first match. And now we're working to a false count anywhere match, um, which MJF claimed will be serious this time. Uh, (laughs) Sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, Stadium Stampede was fun enough last year. I had an okay time watching it. I didn't think it was great. But, yes, having following up the bloody cage war with uh, let's go fight around the Jaguar Stadium and do spots with the mascot or whatever, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't quite feel like, uh, you know, a finale. So maybe they'll do a third big uh team thing i'm trying to think of like another dumb stipulation they could do for they could do it in Britt baker's dentist's office that can be the third match oh remember they did that one on on a pay-per-view yeah people got big mad that it was going to be on the pre-show and demanded to get switched to the (laughs) pay-per-view and tk and tony khan uh, bowed to to the cancel culture and did it the coward all all of their live shows are paced horribly which actually came back to well it both 
did and did not bite them on Dynamite this week because Pac, Pac and Orange Cassidy were both to go to a 20-minute time limit draw. Orange Cassidy, quote-unquote, got his bell rung, which is code for a concussion. And they had to cut that match seven minutes short. Ultimately, it ended up being a, a double count out or double draw finish or whatever. And so you get to the same result. But they ran seven minutes short on that. And so Darby Allen and Miro actually got time in the main event. But they just, but then they hot shot it. They had to rush to get a post match angle with Lance Archer in after Miro won the title. It was just a quick little stare down, but I have no idea why they bothered doing that at all after Miro won the TNT title in, in, in the main event. They just, they have no idea how to time out a show. No, and it's, yeah, it, it's not 1997. <laughs> like you don't have to do your tell. There is a middle ground between so many things are happening to the back, to the back, cut to something else, cut something else, put five extra guys out there um, doing that and doing the boring same matches every week. Everything goes too long. WWE style. There is there. I am 100% sure. Make Oscar and Seamus work twice. Right. There <laughs> Every is week. One, there is a 100% middle ground between those those two styles of television production. That would be like a really good show. Um, and like you said, like plenty of good wrestling on this show. So if they could just please, for the love of God, tighten some stuff up and do 55% less segments <laughs> per show. I think Dynamite would be like a great show or at least a very good show most weeks instead of a, well, that was good, but this really irritated me type of show that it tends to be a lot of times. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. Cause I get, I, yeah, I guess they, they had to fit something in to let you know who Miro's next challenger was, but then you would think the focus would be on Miro winning and then, you know, Darby and Sting and maybe, I assume they're doing Darby and Sting versus uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky at the next show, but I, that's not been announced to my knowledge. So, yeah, I don't know. There's just too too much stuff happening and too many. <laughs> there's I don't know. There's just too much going on. Like I said, so much good wrestling on this show, but it's it's very weird. It's very weird that the same company that produced that opening match with Moxley and Nagata that was so much fun and so good can also be the company that produces the inner circle reenacting Steve Austin's beer bath thing. And, and what about, what about Cody Rhodes cutting a promo uh, invoking segregation? Oh yeah. He's well, he solved racism. You see, (laughs) uh, it's been a long time coming, but Cody finally got the job done. Uh, What the hell was that promo? So you and I were discussing this a little <laughs> bit off the air. I, I had assumed that like Anthony Gogo on dark or dark elevation or I don't know, one of their other like YouTube shows or something was just doing like old school 1970s heel anti-America promos. Like I just assumed that was happening. And I was like, well, I guess, I guess, I guess that's where that. And I was, and I was prepared to come on the show and talk about that, how that's ridiculous, and you should be showing us this stuff. Apparently, Cody's uh, nationalistic promo uh, <laughs> all stems from after giving him the dreaded body shot last week, Anthony Agogo draped the British flag over Cody's body. And that was such a, a slight that Cody had to do uh, an early impression of what Dwayne Johnson's uh, presidential speeches would look like and and talk about nothing for five minutes um and then you know he thinks 9-11 was bad and freedom it's just a little bit better um you know that kind of <laughs> that kind of generic stuff beer should uh, be cold beer should be cold food, sh- food should be dusty <laughs> um uh, but yeah, it was it was a weird promo, and like he's crying during it, and I think he's just I think I think he went to acting school and learned how to cry. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you need something for the for the TV show, right? Oh, sure, sure, and and yes, it was whatever. Like 
fine. Cody, <laughs> do Cody and Anthony Gogo. Like I said, I think I've said, I definitely said it on Twitter. I'm not everyone in QT's little faction is cooler than QT. So I'm totally fine with moving on from that and trying to push, you know, put Cody with a guy that you actually think has potential as like a future star. But I don't know where this, it just came so out of left field and he's going on and on. And then he ends it by talking about how his, his mixed race baby is going to be proud of both her racial identities and he's in tears. And then he is taking his father's nickname for the match. He managed to invoke his wife, his unborn child and his late father all to sell this nothing pro wrestling match. What is he going to be the opener or like the second on the show? It's not like he's, I put him on the (laughs) pre-show. It's Anthony I mean, yeah. Gogo. <laughs> yeah, like again, I don't watch Dark. I don't know, uh, like what, how many actual wrestling matches he's <laughs> had. Zero live. I guess he was. In, no, he wasn't even in that six man. It was the other. It was QT and the other two that were in the match with the Gun Club a couple weeks ago. So, like, yeah, I, I genuinely do not know. Other than he could do the body shot, uh, I don't know what else this guy could do. So. Better keep, I would keep this short, but it's Cody Rhodes, so it'll probably go 45 minutes. He let me look him up here on cage match. It I don't okay. He he works some indies or he worked and in he made his indie debut in February 2019. He appeared as a commentator on Dark in October. He made his Dark debut on Dynamite. Yeah, I I don't think he's had an AEW match. Well, he had the one match on Dynamite where he won in 10 seconds. With oh, right, 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 right. But right. an actual wrestling match, not to my knowledge. Yeah, so that's... Uh... Here he is on some on some indies working tags. Okay, so he's been around for I don't I don't know, man. Yeah, I'd still put him on the on the pre-show. Yeah, I I it's just it was very bizarre to do that promo at all. <laughs> yes. Other than as you mentioned that it's good color that you can cut into a reality show clip. Right. And also, you know, a good uh, you know, a first campaign ad for when he runs for Senate. I don't, I don't know what any of that was or why. Like the feud is that Co- QT was his best friend and now he turned all of his students against him. That was the feud. And now it's the US versus our most hated rivals. Great Britain? <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. It was really dumb. Like, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe sometimes... <laughs> I hope I don't. Maybe get... sometimes TK needs to say no when, 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 even when, even when it's an EVP bringing the idea to him. I mean, he needs to say no to him, to himself, to everyone around him. He just needs to say no a lot more. But I hope I don't, I don't get kicked out of the Nightmare Family for this. <laughs> you don't want it to affect your upcoming guest appearances on <laughs> Hanging with the Roads or whatever the show is going to be called. Please, it's called Roads to the Top. Is that what it's called? Yes. I don't, what is that? Okay, whatever. Like road to the top? <laughs> well, no, I got it. But like, what does that mean in the kind of, he's a professional wrestler. Like, what is that? What road is he on? What, where, what top is he trying to reach? It's about or are Brand- they as a couple? It's about Brandy too, dude. What, what? <laughs> She's, they're at the top. They're executives <laughs> in their company. Maybe it's about the journey. Okay, um, this is making me upset. I'd like to move on. <laughs> well, we have nothing else to talk about, so we can either talk more about this or we can wrap it up. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I think we've 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 covered a lot of ground this week. We've talked about magic and creeps and <laughs> and bad builds for pay per views, and yeah, and you know, best wishes to the people of Japan. Sounds like they're going to need a lot of a lot of help. Yeah. All right. So. Yikes. Until next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. 
and we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life adios Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Hey, man, I haven't screwed up a sign-off in weeks. (laughs) Undefeated. Still (laughs) undefeated. It's been a long day. Sure, sure, sure. So you got that second shot, eh? Yeah. So, and that's part of why it was a long day. I, uh, so I, the place I was getting vaccinated was about, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes from where I work. So, and I get off at five, got out the door. It was like five, five after. And kind of just waiting. And it's like, it doesn't really make sense to go home. I'll just go there. I'll be early. Maybe they could take me early or worst case scenario, I'd sit and wait. Right. So I get there. It's like 520. My appointment's at 545. Starting to park. Suddenly remember, I don't have my little card. Right. So (laughs) I drive home and I get it. And I call uh, on a hands-free device, of course. Uh, (laughs) Naturally. uh, The pharmacy and be like, hey, is this like a a problem? Because the last time... When I got my first dose, they were like, I remember asking like, hey, I, I work till five. Like, and they're like, you need to be in by like, like, like a certain time. Like how, how late do you like, or like, when can you get here? And I said 545 and they said that was fine. So I was like, I was like, I, so I was like, I'm going to be like 10 minutes late. That's fine. Right. And, right. and then, and the pharmacist was like, I'll be here till nine. I don't like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. I guess, I don't know. It's different for the second dose or they have more of a supply now, or I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, what has changed between first and second doses, but Hey, either way, I didn't have to speed or rush to get back. And uh, then I went and got my second shot. Oh, there you go. And then I bought some pop tarts. <laughs> what flavor? Uh, chocolate fudge. All right. Not, not, sure. Not, a fan. not sure they'd be in my top five, but okay. I don't know, man. I just, it's like a comfort pop tart. I mean, I like the s'mores one. They're pretty good. I like the s'mores. Um, I have to be in a mood for it, but I have always, uh, you know, going back to childhood, like the, uh, the the cinnamon ones. Yeah, those are better if you have like coffee or something to go with. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's hard to go wrong. Just go in traditional strawberry or blueberry or cherry. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah, I could, yeah, I think you could make a solid case for fudge not being in the top five. But <laughs> you know what? I looked at it and I went, it's in my top five today. That's fair. That's all right. There was, um, they put out like uh, orange, like orange cream sickle or orange crush flavor or something a couple of years hmm. ago. And I got them. And it was like, it's a terrible decision on pretty much every level. <laughs> Their the decision that... to make the product, your decision to buy the product. Correct. Yes. <laughs> all, <laughs> all, all of this should be a shame. <laughs> so the thing now is that people are just going to be lying about whether or not they've been vaccinated, right? Probably. Because, like, I don't, I don't think we're, you know. I mean, I guess private businesses could, like, make a rule like, hey, you have to wear a mask unless you show the bouncer your or the hostess or whatever your your vaccine card right and then if you show them the card you like sit in a different section and nobody yells at you if you stand up to go to the bathroom and don't have your mask on or whatever but um but yeah i mean i assume unless that's in place like as far as like there's not going to be i mean from my understanding there isn't going to be any sort of governmental oversight on that on that front so right right yeah it's gonna be a lot of honor system stuff just feels like there should be a better way. I try to keep on keeping on.